welcome to the course Introduction to Urban Planning. In this session today, we will continue with our efforts to contextualize our cities. In the previous class, we reviewed the emplotment and covered Mesopotamian, Egyptian, Indus Valley Civilization and Vedic period. Today we shall review Greek and Roman Civilization. Therefore, the coverage of this lecture will include Greek and Roman Civilization. In this, we shall review the geographical spread, timeline, key cities in this period. We will look at key transformation in these periods. We will look at key characteristics and elements of spatial planning in these ancient cities. Accordingly, the coverage would be, we will, according to these coverage, the learning outcome would include that after completion of this session, you should be able to discuss the period, timeline and geographical, socio-economic and political context of these cities. You should be able to compare with the previous period and the current practice. You should be able to identify the key transformation in this period. You should be able to identify the key elements and the components of spatial planning in the cities of these periods. Looking at the Greek civilization, as per the professor of classics and ancient history, Oxford University, Simon Hornblower, the period of ancient Greek history can be counted from the Minoan period 2700 BC to end of Hellenistic period 146 BC as shown in the timeline by John Puak, the classic and archaic period which you see in between are sometimes collectively referred as the Hellenic period. Hellenic Greek refers to the people who lived in the classic Greece before Alexander the Great's death. Greeks Hellenic were isolated and their civilization was termed classic because it was not heavily influenced by outside forces. Hellenistic refers to Greeks and others who lived during the period after Alexander's conquest. They differ from Hellenic in territory with respect to geographical influence, with respect to culture, particularly philosophy and religion and political system with respect to change from a democracy to many small monarchies and ultimately to be controlled by Rome. In the image, the orange color shows the ancient Greece. We see that the most of the Greek mainland was rocky and barren and therefore bad for agriculture. Most Greeks therefore lived along the coastline or on islands where the soil was good for farming. The Agon and Mediterranean seas provided a means of communication and trade with the other places. In the ancient Greece, there were six major cities, Athens, Olympia, Sparta, Thebes, Delphi, Corinth. The ancient Greeks contributed massively to human culture, giving us philosophy, science, architecture, the Olympic Games and the democracy among many other developments. Athens was one of the major ancient Greek cities and continues to be an important city in the modern world. This is the shot of modern Athens taken in 2019. Besides being a foremost example of ancient city-states, Athens advanced in the area of agriculture, urbanization, as well as we see their development of central banks and coinage. In the picture, you see the Athenian treasury and public places like Agora provided urban life with form and function. We are looking at the image of ruins of the marketplace Agora at Athens. The introduction of coinage and currency ramped up the economic growth of the ancient Greek world by superseding the barter system and growing cities. Moreover, the city-states that were established around the 8th century BC were iconic of ancient Greek civilization. Their philosophers, warriors and thinkers are remembered and mythologized even today. Classical Greece saw a flourishing of philosophers, especially in Athens, during its golden age. 
Of these philosophers, the most famous are Socrates, Plato and Aristotle. Socrates born in Athens in the 5th century BCE marks a watershed in ancient Greek philosophy. Many of the Plato's political doctrines are derived from Aristotle's work, the Republic, the Laws and the Statement. The Republic contains the suggestion that there will not be justice in cities unless they are ruled by philosopher kings. We see how the engagement of philosophers and thinkers was identified at that time. We see the key role of advisors even today in managing our cities. Looking at the political context of civilization, there was transformation from rulers to religion. People were worshipping God and democracy. We see that the name given to polis, which means city, captures a state or society, especially when categorized by a sense of community. Formation by the Greeks themselves was snikismos, literally a gathering together. This snikismos Kismos could take one or both of the two forms. It could be physical concentration of the population in a single city or an act of purely political unification that allowed the population to continue living in a dispersed way. Like how we define cities by population and often with density today. Education was key in the period. In all the Greek city-states except for Sparta, the purpose of education was to produce good citizens. Children were trained in music, art, literature, science, math and politics. Athens was a center of learning with sophists and philosophers traveling from across Greece to teach rhetoric, astronomy, cosmology, geometry and the like. Like we see education town today or we see the education system in our cities today. Further, when we look at language, ancient Greece was one of the first civilization to widely use writing as a form of literary and personal expression. As we learned earlier in this session that the region was rocky and barren and was bad for agriculture and therefore they lived along the coastline on islands where the soil was good for farming and there was transformation in economy with banks and currency coming in. We see that the towns had fixed boundaries and some were protected by fortification and because of transformation of political environment, much of the town was devoted to public use. Like in the image, we can see boundaries in open public spaces and agoras. As there was development in architecture, economy, democracy and public life aligned with philosophies. It was reflected in the site planning and designing of the buildings and cities. Most of the public spaces were centered around the main building to allow appreciation of buildings from outside. Also the location of the buildings facilitated good view of the city and the surrounding agriculture lands. Looking at the demographics of the place, the Greece was populated by Menians and Mycenaean tribes. They built citadel, a fortress, typically one on high ground above a city, sites on high rocky outcropping. Because of high location, citadel provided natural fortification and overlooked plains which were used for farming and raising like livestock. The Minions occupied the Greek island, mainly living on Crete. The Mycenaean lived on mainland Greece and the Peloponnesian, the Minian were mainly farmers and traders while the Mycenaeans were a warlike society. They built citadel, a fortress typically one or high ground above a city, sites on high rocky outcropping, because of high location, Citadel provided natural fortification and overlooked plains which were used for farming and raising livestock. 
The Greek people built the citadels, fortification and tombs rather than palaces. This indicates focus shifting towards the common people and safety. Athenian developed the art of logic and with it the idea of democracy. Particularly after the Dark Age, which is explained by many scholars in the Greek period, there was a change from king's rule to demographic identity of Greek cities, primarily because of the cultural shift as the gods of ancient Greece took place of the Mycenaean rulers. The Dark Age, which is explained by many scholars as the fall of the Mycenaean civilization and the Bronze Age to climatic or environmental catastrophe combined with an invasion by Dorians or by the sea people of Greek period. As you can see in the image, Manian people worship the natural world. In the artwork, you can see weeds represented and in the pottery, you may see octopus. And in the natural world, they found the logical order that allowed man to live in harmony with the natural environment. Like in the image of eastern facade of the Parthenon, you can see the architecture following the golden ratio. Likewise, in the image, you can see Mainan city, the ancient Greek domestic architecture centered on open spaces or courtyards surrounded by colonnades. Looking at the spatial structure of the cities in the Greek civilization, city forms were of two types, old and new cities. As you can see in the map, old cities such as Athens had irregular street plans reflecting the gradual organic development. Whereas in the new cities such as Messene, as you can see in the map, these colonial cities established during the end of the Greek period had a grid iron street plan. Certain things were common among cities because of the overall division of spaces in three parts, the Acropolis, Agora and the Greek town. The Acropolis, as shown in the view, the Acropolis in Athens was a religious precinct located on one of the hills of the city. As we see, there was a shift to religion in the period. In the given image, you can see Pesesteretian aqueduct constructed in Athens during the time of tyrant Pesistratus and descendants in 510 BC. This aqueduct carried water from foothills of Hymetus mountain, probably east of the present Hologos suburb for a distance of 7.5 km to the center of the city near the Acropolis. In the given figure, you can see the sanitation system adopted during Greek period. Here you can see in the image the Greek orders, Doric, Corinthian and Iconic orders in the building, the Prophylia, the Parthenon, the Arstheum and the Temple of Nike together forming Acropolis. These orders and combination of forms are the examples of the logical orders derived from the natural world that allowed man to live in harmony with natural environment. The Agora as shown in the view was the most important gathering place in a Greek city. This also reflects the political shifts in Athens from rulers to the democracy of the people. It started as an open area where the council of the city met to take decisions. As in the image, you can see intricate and evolved technology, logic, proportion which shaped the form of the built environment of the city. The image is taken from the famous book, The History of Architecture by Benister Fletcher. You can see the material and the technique used during the Greek period. According to him, Greek gained technology expertise in dealing with structure and materials. We see that the Greek cities were immensely influential in many spheres, such as language, politics, educational systems, philosophy, science, and the arts. In addition, the Greek concern with simplicity, proportion, 
perspective and harmony in their buildings would go on to greatly influence architects in the Roman world and provide the foundation for the classical architectural orders. It had major effects on the Roman Empire which ultimately ruled it. Looking at the political scenario, the name given to the polis formation by Greeks themselves was Snaikos Samos, literally the gathering together. Further we see the education in all the Greek city states except for Sparta, the purpose of education was to produce good citizens. Children were trained in music, art, literature, science, maths and politics. We see that uh, language was also fairly developed. Ancient Greece was one of the first civilization to widely use writings as the form of liter literary and personal expression. Now let us walk through the Roman civilization. Roman civilization which stretched from 500 BC to 600 AD and had large influence on planning which we see in our current times as well. Here in the map we can see the growth of Roman civilization along the Mediterranean Sea. The ancient Romans built one of the greatest empire in the world history. However, the Roman Empire lasted about 500 BCE to 600 AD. The term ancient Rome refers to the city of Rome which was located in central Italy and also to the entire empire it came to rule which covered the entire Mediterranean basin and much of the Western Europe as its greatest extent in stretched from present day northern England to southern Egypt and from Atlantic coast to the shores of Persian Gulf. The Romans built many great cities throughout their empire and these cities were all constructed along similar lines. The following cities of Roman Empire are some of the largest during the time period. These cities include Rome, Phasis, Antioch, Carthage, Londinium, Jerusalem and Alexandria. All the cities are different in each of their own way, categorized by different influential people, trade and architecture. The empire as a whole had initiated major cultural and political transformation since the crisis of the 3rd century with the shift towards a more openly autocratic and ritualized form of government. The adoption of Christianity as the state religion and a general rejection of traditions and values of classical ancient times. The Romans thought of themselves as highly religious and attributed their success as a world power to their collective piety in maintaining good relation with the god. According to legendary history, most of the Rome's religious institution could be traced to its founder, particularly Numa Pompilus, the Sabine second king of Rome, who negotiated directly with the gods. The Romans' enthusiasm for creating and expanding their cities led to significant changes to their environment, such as extensive quarrying and deforestation to provide wood. Deforestation during the Roman period was a result of the geographical expansion of the Roman Empire with its increased population, large-scale agriculture and unprecedented economic development. We see that environmental damage at the same time which is also said to be the cause of their fall. We see that Romans did have some form of ecological conservation like recycling of glassware was practiced along with architectural design that utilized solar heating. Forests were also under government regulations and protected for future resources. Unfortunately, these attempts may have been too late, too little as per the document of the world press. Further in this period, we see that Key measures were taken by the Roman civilization for making water available for the people of the city. We find Roman water carriers aqueducts. The Romans were renowned for engineering marvels. Aqueduct is one of the examples that carried water for many miles in order to provide a 
crowded urban population with relatively safe potable water as well as less essential but very Roman aquatic uses. Roman had nine aqueducts by the time of the engineering sectors. Julius Frontinus appointed curator for aquarium in 97, main ancient source of the water supply. The first of these was built in the 4th century BC and the last in the 1st century AD. Here we can see the advanced system of water supply, the aqueducts and the water reservoirs which are still present. In this image you can see the engineering involved. Aqueducts were built because the spring wells Tiber river were no longer providing the safe water that was needed for the swelling urban population indicating the environmental impact of large scale urbanization. In this period we now face these problems of even larger scale with rapid urbanization across the globe. As per the world press, environment and society, water did not go to all the residents of Rome. Only the rich had private services and the rich were as likely to divert and hence steal the water from the aqueducts as anyone. Water in the residences only reached at the lowest floor. Most Romans got their water from a constantly running public fountain. Aqueducts also supplied water to public latrines and baths. Latrines served 12 to 60 people at once with no dividers for privacy or toilet paper, only a sponge or a stick in the water to pass around. Fortunately, water ran through the latrines constantly. Some latrines were elaborate and may have been amusing. Baths were more clearly a form of entertainment as well as hygiene. The main sewer of Rome was Cloaca Maxima. It emptied into Tiber River. It was probably built by one of the Etruscan king of Rome to drain the marshes in the valley between the hills. During the Roman period, water channeled from distant springs to the city was collected in reservoirs and distribution tank built on hilltop sites and from they piped in different direction to cistern, houses and public fountains. In their book on Byzantine water structure of Istanbul tells us that water from dams in Belgrade forest was carried by pipes to the district in Graikapi, Agrapi at northern edge of the city, crossing the valleys formed by the two streams which flowed into the Golden Horn via aqueduct. From here, three main lines carried the water to tanks in the district of Atpazari, Yani Baise, and Aya Sofia for distribution to rest of the city. We find intricate details of engineering involving aqueduct, water level, distribution chambers, water channels. The reason for the decline of the empire are still debated today and are likely multiple. Historians also infer that the population appears to have diminished in many provinces, especially Western Europe. Judging from the diminishing size of fortification built to protect the cities from barbarian incursions from the 3rd century on, some historians even have suggested that parts of the periphery were no longer inhabited because these fortifications were restricted to the center of the city only. So we see in the later period the size of the kingdom and how they were managed started to make empire fall. Further we see fortification eventually reduced its significance. We also review the hierarchical social structure they followed. In the given hierarchical figure we see a very structured organization of the community the culture of ancient Rome society was divided among three major groups. At the top were the nobles called patricians who controlled most of the land and held key military and government positions made up 5% of Roman citizens. Most people were commoners called plebeians who were farmers, shopkeepers or peasants. Plebeians paid the majority of taxes made up of 95% of Roman citizens. At the bottom of the society were slaves and other non-Roman citizens. 
As you can see in the image, Senate of the Roman Assembly addressing the meeting. The government of ancient Rome was originally ruled by kings, but in 509 BC, the Romans created a republic. A republic is a form of a government in which citizens have the power to elect representatives who make laws for them. In the given image, we can see the structure of members of Roman Republic. The most important features of the Republic was the Senate, whose 300 members were elected by citizens to make laws and taxes. Under these 300 members, further divided into two categories like patricians and plebeians. Under patricians, you had consuls, praetors, aediles, quaestors, and under plebeians, you had tribunes, ordinary people, and slaves. Consuls' role was to manage army and affairs of government. Petros acted as judge. Aediles' role was to help the government in food and building matters. Quaestors were bankers, where plebeians was a group of local people, and their role was to elect the patricians. Romans were more advanced than the Greeks in terms of technological skills which they used to develop better infrastructure facilities and construction techniques. You can see in the given image, lime concrete was invented by the Romans and you can see the stone paved roads. The city of Rome was the largest megapolis of that time with a population that may well have exceeded 1 million people with a high end estimate of 3.6 million low end estimates of nearly 0.4 million. A substantial proportion of the population under the city jurisdiction lived in innumerable urban centers with population of at least 10,000 and several military settlements, a very high rate of urbanization by pre-industrial standards. The most urbanized part of the empire was Italy, which had an estimated rate of urbanization of 32%, the same rate of urbanization of England in 1800. Most Roman towns and cities had a forum, temples, and same type of buildings on a smaller scale as found in Rome. The large urban population required an endless supply of food, which was a complex logistical task, including acquiring, transporting, storing, and distribution of food for Rome and other urban centers. Italian farms supplied vegetables and fruits, but fish and meat were luxuries. The characteristics of the cities were similar. The roads were straight and formed a grid pattern. At the center of the town were two long avenues running east to west and north to south. At the intersection of these two main roads were the administrative buildings, temples, markets, and meeting places. Looking at the characteristic features of the Roman town, we can see that the Roman displayed crude symmetry and artistic rigidity in practice of leveling a hill to make the site confirm to the plan. Roman planning was like the chessboard system having the principal streets rounding across the length. Grid pattern used for planning in the most Roman cities, the city was divided into neighborhoods and quarters with their own centers. In this image, we can see uh, the forum, we can see the um, theater, we can see the stadium, we can see the uh, street pattern, the marketplaces, all these uh, you can see here. So the main components of the Roman buildings, you can see the bridge, aqueduct, basilica, theater, circus, amphitheater, triumph arch, dome, temple. So it took quite a, some time for other civilization to capture the dome construction. You can see in the given plan, the two major and central intersected road in the picture, Cardo Decomanus, the forum at the intersection of the two major roads from the central public space. The Roman forum, also known by its Latin name, Forum Romanum, is a rectangular forum surrounded by the ruins of several important ancient government buildings at the center of the city of Rome. Citizens of ancient city referred to this place, originally a marketplace, as Forum Magnum or simply the Forum. The Forum was massive, ranging from 160 feet to 145 feet. 
The market, the temple site and the other non-residential buildings were artificially raised above the general street level. The public buildings had porticos, colonnades and other features giving variety to architectural scene. Some houses were as big as 200 feet by 200 feet. Many of the oldest and the most important structure of the ancient city were located on or near the forum. Roman kingdom earliest shrines and temples were located on the south eastern edge. These included the ancient former royal residence, the Regia and the temple of Vesta as well as the surrounding complex of the Vestal Virgins, all of which were rebuilt after the rise of the imperial Rome. Looking at the education context of these cities, we see that schooling in the same time was a more formal sense began around 200 BC. Education began at the age of around 6 and in next 6 to 7 years boys and girls were expected to learn the basics of reading, writing and counting. By the age of 12 they would be learning Latin, Greek, grammar and literature followed by training for public speaking. Oratory was an art to be practiced and learnt and good orator commanded respect. To become an effective orator was one of the objective of education and learning. Poor children could not afford education. In some cases, services of gifted slaves were utilized for imparting education. School was mostly for boys. However, some wealthy girls were tutored at home but could still go to school sometimes. Now looking at the art form, we see that most early Roman painting style show Etruscan influences, particularly in the practice of political painting. In the 3rd century BCE, we see Greek art taken as loot from the wars became popular and many Roman homes were decorated with landscapes by Greek artists. Evidence from the remains at Pompeii shows diverse influence from cultures spanning the Roman world. An early Roman style of note was incrustation in which interior walls of houses were painted to resemble colored marble. Another style consisted of painting interiors as open landscape with highly detailed scenes of plants, animals and buildings. We also see portrait sculpture during the period, utilized youthful and classical proportion evolving later into a mixture of realism and idealism. Music was major part of everyday life in ancient Rome. Many private and public events were accompanied by music ranging from nightly dining to military parade and maneuvers. Some of the instruments used in Roman music were tuba, cornu and so on. We also see that census played a crucial role in administration of the Roman government as it used to determine the class a citizen belonged to or both military and tax purpose. Beginning in the middle republic, it was usually carried out every five years. So summarizing, we see that in the session today, uh, we saw the Greek and the Roman period. We saw their geographical spread, timeline, geographical conditions and the key cities. Further, we saw key transformation in the civilization. We saw uh, what was their economy like, what were the philosophies, education, sports, art, culture, technology, architecture, political governance, political scenario, governance, sports, discoveries, change in spatial planning, key elements, water supply and sanitation and social structure. We also saw how urbanization was increasing and was eventually causing damage to the environment such as deforestation, soil deterioration and flooding. We also see record keeping and usage of sensors in this period. So there is a lot of learning which we can take from all, all, all these contexts and what kind of, uh, what kind of steps the, uh, these cities were taking forward which we can, uh, we can derive a lot of learning from this. That's, That's all for today. These, these are, are the suggesting readings and videos which you can look more to understand these uh, periods. Uh, we would like to thank certain people who have helped us in bringing this up. These are the references for this section.
Our coverage was limited with the scope to make you aware of the topic. There are enormous readings and movies available to explore. Few are suggested here. This is not an extensive list. You may feel free to suggest more from your experience. Please feel free to ask questions. Let us know about your concerns you have. Do share your opinion, experiences and suggestions. Looking forward to interacting and co-learning with you while exploring cities and urban planning. Thank you.